blood travels around your body in a complex circulatory system composed of two loops. The pulmonary circulation, taking deoxygenated blood to your lungs, and the systemic circulation, taking oxygenated blood to the rest of your body before returning it to the heart. These loops are part of a closed circulatory system, whereby blood is contained within highly specialised vessels that make sure it travels to and from its destination in an efficient manner. My name's Connor, and today we're going to be covering the nine types of blood vessels that exist in the human body. Let's start with the fundamentals. Oxygenated blood leaves your heart via arteries, which branch they transport this blood towards their target tissues. The first of these branches is into arterioles, which are similar to arteries but much smaller. Arterioles branch into small capillaries, which have thin walls to facilitate exchange. And these capillaries condense back into venules, which have a large lumen and perform a similar job to arterioles. Finally, venules join together to produce veins, which carry blood back to the heart. These arteries, arterioles, capillaries, veins and venules all have very specific structures which make them good at their jobs. Let's take a closer look at these now. Let's begin with the capillaries, which are the simplest. These are microscopic tubes with a very thin wall to permit the exchange of small molecules with surrounding tissues. They have a very narrow lumen, sometimes only big enough for a single red blood cell to fit through. And they are lined with a layer of simple squamous endothelium, which is bound to surrounding tissue by a thin porous membrane known as the basement membrane. Now, this endothelium plus basement membrane structure will remain constant throughout the entire circulatory system, so get used to the way it looks. From here on out, we're going to refer to these structures together as the tunica intima. This comes from the words tunic, as in the type of clothing, and intimate, meaning closely acquainted. Now, capillaries get a little bit more specialised than this, but we'll cover that later. Moving up in complexity, we have the arterioles. These have a tunica intima, like capillaries, although the lumen is considerably larger. However, in arterioles, this tunica intima is surrounded by a sleeve of elastic fibres known as the internal elastic lamina. This allows the arterioles to recoil after they expand due to high pressures in the lumen, thus maintaining blood pressure. The internal elastic lamina sits at the border with a ring of smooth muscle, often only one or two cells thick. This allows the arterioles to contract and reduce their lumen size when blood pressure is low, also assisting in keeping the pressure around a constant level. This smooth muscle forms a new layer known simply as the tunica media, where media comes from median or middle. Lastly, we have a sheath of strong connective tissue known as the tunica externa, or sometimes the adventitia. This word comes from external, meaning around the outside. Now, the ability of arterioles to contract and expand to maintain blood pressure, and their narrow lumen reducing the rate at which blood can flow through them, has given them the nickname resistance vessels, which you'll often see in textbooks. Next, we'll move on to the arteries, which can be some of the chunkiest blood vessels in the body, with a total width of 2 cm. That's 200 times the size of an arteriole. Arteries, like arterioles, have an internal elastic lamina that aids in recoil. They also have a smooth muscle layer, which is usually the thickest part of the vessel. This smooth muscle, and thus the tunica media as a whole, is invested by elastic fibres, which act in a similar way to the elastic laminae. Furthermore, at the border of the tunica media and externa, they have another layer of elastic tissue known as the external elastic lamina. This is present only in larger arteries. The final feature that differentiates arteries from arterioles is the presence of small blood vessels and nerves in their walls known as the vasovasorum and nervi vasorum, meaning literally vessels of the vessels or nerves of the vessels. These nerves are typically part of the sympathetic nervous system and regulate vasoconstriction and dilation in the vessels. The vasovasorum and arteries are contained to the outermost part of the tunica externa, as high pressures in the lumen would collapse them if they were any closer to the interior. Next, we'll cover the venules, which are fortunately quite simple. They have larger lumens than arterioles, but as they are further from the heart, the pressures they have to deal with are low. For this reason, they have no elastic lamina to facilitate recoil. In fact, their tunica media is extremely simple and consists only of a few small muscle cells and the occasional elastic fibre. The tunica externa is also thin and acts simply to hold the whole structure together. Finally, let's look at veins. These are our main capacitance vessels, 
meaning they contain most of the blood that is in the circulatory system at any one time. They have a very wide lumen, surrounded by the tunica intima, and a thin layer of smooth muscle in the tunica media. Like venules, they also have very little elastic tissue in the walls. They have a strong tunica externa, which tends to be thicker than the tunica media, and is also penetrated by small vasa and nervi vasorum. Unlike arteries, veins also have vasovasorum in their tunica media, allowed by the lower pressures in the lumen. Veins also have a small amount of smooth muscle scattered around their tunica externa. Finally, some veins, especially those in the peripheries, have valves, which are outpouchings of the endothelium and ensure blood can only travel in one direction. The largest veins are around 2 cm wide, which you'll recall is the same size as the largest arteries. However, due to the much thinner tunica media and externa, their lumen size is in fact substantially greater. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of all five blood vessels. They're not drawn to scale, but take a minute to appreciate the differences in their structures before we move on. Okay, great. Let's run through what we've learned so far. Blood flows away from the heart into arteries, then arterioles, capillaries, venules, and veins. Capillaries are the simplest blood vessels, and their walls are composed only of a single layer of stratified squamous cells, known as the endothelium, and the basement membrane. Arterioles are more complex and have an internal elastic lamina and a smooth muscle-filled tunica media. Arteries have an internal elastic lamina, elastic fibres in the tunica media, and sometimes an external elastic lamina. They also have a very thick layer of smooth muscle in the tunica media and vasovasorum and nervi vasorum in the tunica externa only. Venules have a relatively wide lumen compared to capillaries and arterioles and have a small amount of smooth muscle in their walls. Lastly, veins have a smooth muscle tunica media with some smooth muscle cells in the tunica externa. They also have vasovasorum and nervi vasorum in both the tunica media and externa, and some have valves to prevent backflow. Now, the more astute of you will have noticed that the title of this video says nine blood vessels, but we've only covered five. We're going to finish off by covering the remaining specialized forms of these first five blood vessels. This list isn't totally exhaustive, but these are generally considered to be the main subtypes of these vessels. First, we have two specialized types of artery. These are elastic arteries, which are found close to the heart, and muscular arteries, which are found pretty much everywhere else. A subtype of arterioles are metarterioles, which are found in the capillary beds. And finally, capillaries can be classified into three types, continuous capillaries, fenestrated capillaries, and sinusoids. We'll be really quick and cover each of these in more detail. Elastic arteries include the aorta, pulmonary artery, and its branches. They have a huge amount of elastic tissue in all three tunica layers, so much so that it makes it hard to distinguish the internal and external elastic laminae. These arteries are able to expand a huge amount in order to contain all the blood from each heartbeat. The elastic fibers then recoil during diastole to maintain appropriate blood flow. Basically, all other arteries are known as muscular arteries and have the same structure discussed earlier. They are able to contract due to their smooth muscle, but have less ability to expand compared to the elastic arteries. Our specialized form of arteriole is known as a metarteriole. These are the arterioles that branch to produce a capillary bed. They have numerous precapillary sphincters at the branching points that can contract to reduce the flow of blood into the capillaries and essentially produce a shunt right into the venous circulation. To finish off, we'll cover the three subtypes of capillary. The first, and the one we've previously discussed, is the continuous capillary. These have a complete endothelial and basement membrane lining, and allow adequate amounts of exchange between blood and the surrounding tissues. These are the most common types of capillaries, and are seen in most organs, for example the skin over your big toe. Next, we have fenestrated capillaries which have an intact basement membrane, but have numerous small poles or fenestrations in their endothelium. These fenestrations derive their name from the Latin word for window and facilitate greater degrees of exchange, for example, in the glomerulus of the kidney. And last of all, we have sinusoids. These have extensive gaps between cells in the endothelium and an incomplete basement membrane. They are found in the liver, bone marrow, adrenal glands, and other organs that require mass exchange of large molecules. Flow through them is slow, and the large holes allow exchange of big structures, including some cells. There we go. 
That's all nine of the blood vessel types found in the human body. I owe a lot of the information here to the BC Open Textbook Project, who have released a fantastic free-to-access anatomy and physiology textbook, which I'll link to in the description. If you liked this tutorial, remember to subscribe to the channel and leave a comment down below with what you'd like to see us cover next. Have a great day.